Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast, brought to you by the Funny Womax and Friends. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, musicians, and comedians that perform here and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what makes our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Don Davis Womack. Hello, Laughers. I am thrilled to have with us Lizzie Lewis, the Community Development Tourism Director of Front Royal here in the Shenandoah Valley. In this quaint, historic town for all seasons, you can explore the Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah Valley, Shenandoah National Park, Skyline Drive, Luray Caverns, or Skyline Caverns. It's a place where you can enjoy a variety of recreational activities, award-winning wineries, breweries, and distilleries. Take a stroll down their historic Main Street with murals by incredible local artists, experience unique shops, nostalgic entertainment, or dine at one of their wide variety of memorable restaurants. We're excited to have Lizzie with us here today to share more. Welcome to the show, Lizzie. It's great to have you on today. It's great to be here, Dawn. Thank you. Yeah, you have such an interesting job to do what you do. Well, it's got a lot of words in the title, that's for sure. It does. I imagine every day is probably not the same. Hardly ever. Yeah. Right? Hardly ever. So it's it's definitely dynamic, which I do like. Um, you know, challenges are good. Lots of challenges are better. So we'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. And Laughers, we're here in the Visitor Center in Front Royal. And this used to be a train station. Is that correct? That's right. For a really, really long time. If you ever come and see us in person, Mm -hmm. we'll show you a picture of the building that's actually from the 1800s, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, and that's pictured right here in the, I imagine there's, it looks like there's a bit of a museum in here. Yeah. So uh, we're in our historic train station and we don't have a traditional museum, but we do have some of our historic artifacts, including a gigantic piece of a limb from the tree that we're named for. So oh. front the Royal Oak. Okay. It's a thing. It is a thing. It is. I'm glad you brought that up because I was reading a little bit about how it's a bit unclear how Front Royal got its name. There are three stories, but my favorite is that we front the Royal Oak. It was a a military maneuver when they were practicing in what at the time was the town square. So they would front the Royal Oak tree and Mm -hmm. it just got shortened to Front Royal. That's pretty cool. That's our story and we're sticking with it. (laughs) Can we hear the other two stories? Maybe another time. Okay. (laughs) I like how you're sticking with it for sure. Can you share a little bit more about your background? I understand you have a degree in public relations from George Mason University. So how does one get from a degree in public relations to your current role here in Front Royal? Well, usually by accident. Um, (laughs) You know, so yes, I go Patriots. They do train us to say that at George Mason. Um, I had a really cool career coming into this job. I have been able to try a lot of different things and use that experience to help connect people. And I think that's what I do best is really connecting people and connecting resources. And so now I get to help connect everybody with our cool little town here in Front Royal. Ah, how long have you been in this position? Oh, only since, uh, well, I've been director since December. Okay. I was the manager since March of last year. So okay. then prior to that, I was the special events and um, public arts coordinator here for the town for about a year before that. I've only been at the town a little over two years. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Stephen City, Virginia. So just okay. up the road, but still in the valley. Ah, okay, good. Yeah. Keeping it real over there. I love it. <laughs> And we are nestled right here in the Shenandoah Valley Laughers here in Front Royal. We're on the main street and around us there is stunning natural beauty. How does the Front Royal town leverage its location and natural resources to attract both residents and tourists? So we've been the gateway to the Skyline Drive since its inception. And so we have always been proud of that fact. But what we really like is that 
we're not just a front gate. So mm-hmm. this community has a vibrant culture that Dawn's already told you about in our intro. So really, I could just go home at this point. <laughs> um, you know, we I have, love fun guests. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have yeah. a variety of, of natural resources, as you talked about. You know, yeah. we're very proud of the Shenandoah River. We are the canoe capital of Virginia. There is an official decree in everything. We've got the receipts. We can show them to you. Um <laughs> You know, we we are very proud of, like I said, of our waterway in in the Shenandoah. Um, we're very proud of being here in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and it's it's a pleasure to be able to have such a beautiful place to live and work every day. Mm. I noticed in your visitor's guide, you take advantage of leveraging what you have. You're darn tootin'. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's, and there was a list of 50 things to do at the end of the visitor guide. Oh, we've got way more than 50, but we'll start you there and then come back to us and let you, let you know what else you need. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into more of that. That sounds good. Yeah, definitely. And I love all that you shared about what's nestled in the Shenandoah Valley, because you know what else is nestled in the Shenandoah Valley? What's that? It is popcorn from our sponsor, pre Popsterous. that absurdly flavorful popcorn. I brought you some today. What you, you-, you did, and I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I believe I've got the cheddar flavor. Let's give that a go. Yeah, give it a go. Little ASMR section here in the middle of the podcast. I like that. <laughs> this is delicious. Isn't it amazing? Who are these guys, William? Pre Popsterous. They're located in Bridgewater, Virginia. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. And their popcorn is made in a factory that's 100% net free. Wow. Mm-hmm. Their kernels are grown right here in the Shenandoah Valley. Very cool. And they just got the Virginia's finest trademark. Wow, mm-hmm. that's tough to get. It is tough to get. Very cool. Yes, and for those maybe not be familiar with that, it means it's a top crafted special food here in Virginia. And you can count on it. It's delicious. Yep. I love it so much. And we offer our laughers a 15% discount. I love a good sale. <laughs> Me too. Just use promo code LAUGH15 when you visit pre today. That's P R E P O P. S-T-E-R-O-U-S dot com and grab some of these delicious flavors today. Now back to you, Lizzie. I'm in the hot seat. (laughs) Back in the hot seat. The history of Front Royal is rich in Civil War history. Very true. Most notably. And that's significant. How do you or how does the town preserve the history surrounded around that? So we love our partnership with the Civil War Trails organization. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you know most of your listeners are probably familiar with them, but if they're not, they're very cool. You should check them out. Definitely. And you know we we love that partnership, but we also have a little little bit of preservation on our own. So mm-hmm. uh, the Warren Heritage Society right here on Chester Street, it's around the corner from us. Um, they have done an extraordinary job of preserving their history and their. Uh, these historic buildings that they've actually had moved into this um, little courtyard and they do guided tours and they wear costumes and they do all sorts of cool demonstrations and really try to tell the story. Um, We're particularly proud of our Confederate spies because we are home to more than one, both of which are female, which is extraordinarily cool for um, for those of us who are into that sort of thing. So um, we always encourage folks to go and check out their story. Absolutely. Where can they check out those stories? So we've got a little information on our website and discoverfrontroyal.com, but we always direct you to the Warren Heritage Society because they tell it the best. Mm, mm-hmm. They've done all the hard work to they get the did. facts together. <laughs> God bless them. They did. And so on our historic walking tour, um, that it's a self-guided walking tour. That's mm-hmm. probably the second most distributed material out of our visitor center. Um, there's a number of stops on there that are at the Heritage Society so that you can get the story firsthand. I love it. Yes. And if you saw me have just a momentary freak out there, laughers, I knew it doing the whole thing, whole kit and caboodle. I was audio first with this podcast. Now we're adding a video (laughs) element and I'm like, what? (laughs) It's okay. We're making it through. That's right. And we're learning and we're glad you're here. So support this podcast. (laughs) Give it a like and subscribe and you'll watch me get my act together. (laughs) 
<laughs> these next several months. Thank you for doing this, Lizzie. It's I a love show it. within a show. <laughs> it is a show. We within love it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now your town offers some self-guided tours. I thought that was pretty fascinating. Some of the ones I wanted to point out was the Battle of Royal, I'm sorry, the Battle of Front Royal Driving Tour, the Front Royal Walking Tour, and geocaching. Can you talk to us about all these options, please? Absolutely. So okay. our Battle of Front Royal Driving Tour, that's focused very specifically on a Civil War battle that naturally came through Front Royal. Um, so the tour is it's step by step as the troops advanced through um, what is now Warren County and Front Royal. Um, it tells you the story of, of how the things uh, progressed um, on both sides of the ball. So that's that's pretty cool to be able to see. There's particularly one called the Bridges um, that's talking about how they set fire to the bridges to try to stop the advancing from the other side and then it backfired. It's a whole thing. So it's an epic story that you do want to check out for sure. Um, and I think there's even little nuggets that maybe you didn't realize you didn't know. Like I had no idea what Stonewall Jackson's first name was. I don't know that. Don't ask me now because now I don't remember. <laughs> But, but I you'll was, learn it. We'll learn it when we do that. I feel like that. it's like Thomas or something, okay. but you're going to get hate mail now because I said a name and it probably wasn't the right name and, and this is forever uh, encased in digital history. So, yeah. but that's you okay. Here. Luckily for you, if you come to see us, I will not be your tour guide. So that's don't, right. don't worry. I'm just the tourism lady. So, yes. Yeah. And you will get the correct facts. You will. Yes, I promise. We've got it all tour. right in the, in the information. It's all right there. You're yes. going to be okay. Yes. Um, and then, of course, we already talked about our walking tour a mm -hmm. little bit. There's uh, 32 points of interest, I think, on there, um, some of which are art, some of which are historic buildings, um, a lot of which are beautiful parts of our history. I mean, our town was founded in 1788. That's amazing. It's 236 years of happenings. Yeah. So we try to preserve that as best we can. Yeah, that's incredible. And we want to share it with you. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's rich American history right here in Front Royal for sure. We think so. Yeah, I think so too. I, I like also that you have the Shenandoah Spirits Trail. And I've recently learned about this Blue Ridge Whiskey Wine Loop. Which also sounds very intriguing. <laughs> yes. So. Talk to us about these intriguing things. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> we are um, Virginia's rich in alcohol history, and mm -hmm. we're happy to be a part of those types of history as well. Um, you know, you'll learn when you visit either one of those trails that there's a lot of really cool, particularly family and locally owned businesses that mm -hmm. continue that rich tradition. And it's amazing to me how we're able to um, connect with generations of folks in the Shenandoah Valley and in, in Virginia as a whole, um, being able to connect with those generations and continue that, that history. Um, and I, I think it's really kind of fun and social and a way yeah. to learn more. We actually have books here in the visitor center that we sell in our store, um, about, you know, the history of distilling in Virginia and the history of wine in Virginia and how it's been truly impactful, both economically and culturally here mm -hmm. in Virginia. And so, you know, we're happy to be a part of all of those things. And I'm actually working on a new project to be able to connect even more of those spirits places but you have to stay tuned for that whoa we might have to come back laughers oh no maybe you will <laughs> and i'll have my act together more by then. Where's maybe the, where's the fun in that where's the fun in that we'll see right stay tuned again subscribe <laughs> <laughs> You'll go for a ride. I promise you that. If you need anything else. Uh, I think it would contribute a lot to the tourism here. How do people find out about these? It seems like those would be really popular. The whiskey wine loop and the spirits absolutely, trail. absolutely. So when um, both of those things were started, and I will take credit for neither because we inherited those. Um, they were they were started with the idea of connecting people who had a passion for enjoying those types of spirits and having mm -hmm. that experience. Um, and so what they did was they, they decided to, to bring those folks together um, and present 
really kind of an itinerary of, of sorts um, to mm-hmm. give people those activities and, and connecting those dots because a lot of times you just don't know, especially mm-hmm. the little tiny hole in the wall places, um, places that aren't as forward facing as some of the others, but are still just as cool of an experience. Um, mm-hmm. We've got kind of a hidden brewery here in Warren County too. Oh. Um, so I know. Are we, do we get to reveal that? I mean, we could, sure. It's Backroom Brewery. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, no. but um, they're, they're a f- funky fun. little spot, but, um, <laughs> and, and their proprietor is a riot. So, okay. you know, we're, we're happy to be able to bring those types of experiences to people who wouldn't otherwise know. That's uh, kind of what we do here at the Visitor Center. So. Okay. Yeah. We like to have riots as guests on this show, just putting a plug out there. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I'll make a few calls. Okay, that would be great. You know something else that I thought was really exciting when I was studying? What's that? Front Royal. You have a trolley? We do. And it's 50 cents each way? I'm about to blow your mind. It's actually free. What? Yeah. So dur- Okay, that's a change, no? During the pandemic, uh, they okay. decided to, that was one small thing that they could do to make it a little more accessible for folks. And so we have decided to remain fare free. So um, we partner with Virginia Regional Transit Corporation and mm-hmm. they provide that trolley service for us. Um, so we have transport public transportation that's available seven days a week here in Front Royal that's completely free. That's amazing. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's public transit. It's mm-hmm. a bus. But it looks really cool because it's a trolley. I know. Um, I was excited. I, was, I know. A lot of people. need to get on this thing. <laughs> it, and it's fun. It's yeah. fun to do. Um, you know, actually, we've had a lot of interest lately about doing a guided tour on the trolley. So yeah. we're working with VRT to see if we can make that happen. I won't yeah. be the tour guide. Don't worry. Um, yeah. But, you know, we'll find somebody who's qualified to actually do that yeah. if we can make that happen. But it'd be really cool because we've got be. our walking tour, we've got our driving tour, and now let's do a guided tour. Why not? On the trolley. Yeah. Yeah. And even if we can't make that happen, I got some ideas to figure out a different way. So I, I'm hoping, I want to see this come to fruition. And the trolley's just cool. It is. Yeah. The pictures are really awesome. I'm be looking for it today when I'm driving around. Well, it stops by the visitor center twice an hour, so you'll okay. be able to see it. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And it runs every day? Every day. Now, our service is a little modified on the weekends, just because okay. it's not quite as utilized at that time. Um, but something that we do during this season of the year, depending on when you're watching this, um, is during the Appalachian Trail hiking season. So we have a trailhead. It's three miles south of us. And so we go out um, four times a day, every day, to go and grab those folks so that they can come into town and utilize some of our services. And I'm hoping I'm not cannibalizing one of your future questions. But (laughs) if I am, I'm sorry. That's okay. And I am going to allow you to talk about hiking just a little bit. Okay, I can do that. Just a little. This podcast is about all things non-hiking. Well, and I'm an indoor cat, so I can't talk much about it, but I can talk about some of the services we have. Exactly. Yes. And that's the tie-in here, Laughers, is we're talking about all the things they can do when they're not hiking. Oh, that I can handle. Yes. Yes. Okay. I love that. Ooh. Which is catching them from the trailhead and bringing them down here. Yeah. As absolutely. part of it. I love that. And your main street is bustling with history and boutique shops and dining options. Can you highlight some more of the few of your hidden gems? That oh you boy. Have here? Okay. Well, you know, we don't, we don't play favorites. We love them all. Um, but what's yes. really cool is that we've got a lot of small shops. We've got um, a lot of small local restaurants. You know, there, there aren't any chains on our main street and there's nothing wrong with a chain restaurant. We've got plenty of those mm-hmm. um, and chain shopping too. There's nothing wrong with any of that but there's something really special about going into a business or a restaurant or an attraction of any kind that's local that's owned by your neighbor Mm -hmm. and operated by your friend's kid and you know um, we're really lucky to have we've got a women's fashion boutique at Buckle and Bell and we've got um, a restaurant that's also got a second floor that's all a pool hall and a bunch mm. of pool tables, which is kind of unique. You don't yeah. see those that often anymore. Um, we've got the Fireball Arcade, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's all retro games. Um, you know, we've got our Main Street Geek, which is a 
They're not just a comic book shop. They would kill me if I said they were just a comic book shop. They are not. I promise. Um, yes, she <laughs> promised. You I, heard this. I promise. They they have <laughs> Lego and all sorts of things. Um, you know, we've got great gift shops, and we've got Dusty's Country Store and Turnmeyers and White Picket Fence, and you know, we've got a little something for everybody. And then we've got some fine dining too at the Element and. Um, some other restaurants that I know you guys are going to check out later, maybe in this mm, podcast, we'll just absolutely. have to see, we'll have to stay tuned, yeah, um, stay tuned, subscribe, subscribe, <laughs> um, but more vibrantly, we are now becoming really this like arts thing, which we kind yeah. of stumbled into accidentally, I guess. I mean, the people who cultivated all these murals, we have nine now. I saw one right on my way in. So um, it looks like a crane or a bird of some kind. Yes. Okay. Um, there are there are eight murals as you're walking up and down Main Street, and then mm. there's a ninth that's hidden away. It may be one of your other stops that you're uh, going to today. Uh, um, I can't but wait. there are... Now we've got multiple studios on Main Street, art studios on Main yeah. Street. We've got um, two galleries. I, I mean, we're really becoming this place where if you want to come and create something, we're here for it, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. We dig it. Yeah. You have uh, a theater here too? We do. Okay. Um, we have a movie theater right here on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's been here since... The early 1900s. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, the Royal Cinemas, and we've got somebody who's actually working on a project right now to bring back a performance theater that's yeah. still here on Main Street. So he has purchased this historic building and is trying to revitalize it back to its glory days. And yeah, the great. whole community is really excited about it. So yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've we've got fine art, we've got a lot of visual art, we have a lot of performing arts. Um, the Blue Ridge Arts Council puts on a concert series here at the gazebo on Main Street mm -hmm. every summer, every Thursday night, the gazebo gathering that's series. Why I've been here. Yeah, that's I've done why some comedy here and that. <laughs> Love that, yes. So, and I was trying to remember. This place looks familiar. It's been a minute. That's why. <laughs> well, and you know what? We've uh, we've got some new establishments on Main Street that yeah. are bringing back comedy nights too. So I saw that. You know, that would be more back yeah. to your roots, but still something kind of cool. So to at least come check out. But yeah, we've got a few places that we're truly just. Um, we're a pretty welcoming place and yeah. and we, we want to try new things. And right now we seem to be in a bit of a renaissance here on Main Street and I'm here for it. I'm here for it too. I'm awesome. excited to walk around and now you got me curious where I might find that mural mm. hidden away. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm going to have to keep my eyes peeled, laughers. <laughs> and we'll get some shots of it too and share it hopefully. There you go. There we go. <laughs> if I don't miss it, again, I'm getting my act together. <laughs> <laughs> I think we established that. All right. <laughs> you have festivals and concerts, too, that play a big role in Front Royal's cultural life. Could you share some insights on your most popular events and what makes them special? I think of a wine festival coming up or we something. We do. We okay. do. So May 18th. So it's always the third Saturday in May. Yeah. Our local Chamber of Commerce puts on the Virginia Wine and Craft Festival. This year is number 36, wow. which is pretty wild. Um, so it's a one day event that happens here on Main Street, um, all around the gazebo and then on our adjacent street, Chester Street. That's kind of where all the happenings are. Um, so that's a big deal for us. There are uh, usually right around 20 wineries oh, that's and great. a whole bunch of um, different craft vendors, local makers, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a really fun day. It's free admission. Obviously, you got to pay for a wine tasting ticket, but True, you, yeah. you do get a glass and a fun day and you get to wander around our historic downtown, which is really cool. And this year, I think they're, they've added a VIP option too. Oh, that's great. So there's like a little reception area and there's yeah. like VIP specific wineries and a bathroom that's inside, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're living large out here. 
um, that's right come to this festival but we've got a lot of festivals actually okay so we're a bit of a festival town what kinds do you have oh Talk my gosh so it. we do a lot of family festivals okay um we're pretty well known for our festival of leaves that's in october um being here surrounded by this natural gorgeousness mm-hmm. it does all change color and it is extraordinary and it does create Very traffic gorgeous. shenanigans however yes. we understand that people who don't have leaves in their backyard like mm-hmm. we do want to come see it and we get that so we're okay with it mm-hmm. um so our festival of leaves this year will be number 52 wow yeah so that's a family oriented free admission multiple concert stages we bring in a bunch of bands um last year was the first year that we added a dancing downtown friday night party the night before so we have a band and we've got a like a a beer garden and all kinds of stuff and food trucks and so we do that on friday night and everybody's welcome but that's especially um, attractive to our locals who don't necessarily want to come down when there's 7,000 people on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's uh, October 11th and 12th this year. So we're okay. looking forward to that. Um, and of course, we're the neighbors of the Appaloosa Festival. So the yeah. Appaloosa Roots Festival happens um, out at the Skyline Ranch Resort, which is in Warren County, which is where we are here in Front Royal. Um, yeah. That happens Labor Day weekend every year. And I think this is year number nine, maybe, for their festival. What did you call it again? I've never... Appaloosa Roots Music Festival. Really? So the headlining band, who's also the band that actually produces the festival okay it's called scythian okay um we're very fortunate that they're from here they're from front royal and they're this internationally touring band in roots music which is not wow. a genre i was super familiar with oh, so this is like appalachian kind of music um or? it's it's got a vibe okay. for sure i wouldn't want to pigeonhole them because mm-hmm. they know where i live so um <laughs> but i would say she's so fun <laughs> but okay. i i would say that you know you should definitely check them out on youtube or spotify or yeah. wherever you stream on but um really fun energetic kind of music and you know it's a huge family event that they do out there i mean people go and camp and it's a whole thing so that's labor day weekend yeah um and then of course we're known for our christmas parade and uh the chamber of commerce is bringing back their their beer festival this year the something's brewing beer fest (laughs) oh when does that happen that is september 28th oh september's big Yes. Yeah. So basically, we'll have the wine festival this spring, and then mm. we're going to have, a, we'll call it a break in the summer, but that's not really a break because we've got other little things going on. <laughs> and then Labor Day weekend, you know, we've got Appaloosa, and then September 24th. 21st we will have the beer festival yeah. and then we're going to throw in some other little festivals that nobody else even knows about yet on the 28th and then October 5th and then October 11th and 12th is the festival of leaves so we're we're a little festival crazy around here you are but we like a good party yeah I can tell <laughs> big fans <laughs> there's a lot to do here in Very Front true. Royal yes. I love it Very much I so. like the family oriented activities you provide too we try to have something that's for everybody and And, you know, part of my deal Mm. here working for the town is that my job is to try to make things that are accessible and engaging at the same Mm. time. So we try to think of as many ways to make it accessible for families um, and and make it engaging for folks as we can. Mm. Engaging. Do you do any AI engaging with people that travel through or anything like that yet? AI scares me a little bit. <laughs> I think it scares all of us a little I'm, bit. I'm not ready to embrace the robots just yet. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying no, but not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We'll no. see what happens. Yeah. I'm, Stay tuned. I want to watch that ride out a little bit first. Before you get in involved did, in your town. <laughs> full disclosure. Okay. We're trying to name this new fall thing that I'm working on. Okay. That again, nobody knows about yet. Right. Uh, but I guess they're about to, huh? I didn't think about that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to name it. And so yeah. we used chat GPT yesterday and we just laughed at the results that I know gave us sometimes. Yeah. Lots of times you just have to, we're no closer to a name, right? But it was fun. You have to let go of some of its suggestions. Yes. It's okay. It is okay. All right. I just wondered how people are going to start incorporating that in different aspects and in different industries. I'm not ready. Okay. So 
fair. Stay tuned again, laughers. Community involvement is crucial for the success of any tourism initiative. How do you engage the residents to ensure tourism benefits the whole local community? Whew. I know that's a loaded question. That is, that is a serious question. So, you know, something that we try to do here as a community is we value tourism because we recognize it's important for people to come and see us and to know who we are. And, um, but we want to have just as much of an offering for the people who actually live here. Mm -hmm. You know, I live here, my staff lives here. The, um, we, we want this community to thrive all the time, not just during tourism season. Mm -hmm. So we try to be really mindful of that. Um, we try to have, at least the same offering to those who live here as the ones we we try to attract. Um, but we do, as a community, recognize the value of having folks come and spend time with us, be it a day, be it a few days, um, and then go back home. <laughs> and that's okay. And we want to see you again next year. But don't stay here. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we love... We... we I'm very lucky to be in a place where we get it that mm -hmm. tourism is important and that we want our friends to know that we live in a cool place and we want them to come check it out. And then we want them to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so front Royal can <laughs> stay front Royal. So, I we, imagine, can, so right? we can remain yeah. um, a small quaint mountain town yes okay i just have a couple more questions for you are they all as hard as that one was <laughs> i have i don't think so okay you say so but i shouldn't claim that so <laughs> <laughs> that's why i was struggling there okay words what do you got what do you got okay i'm wondering in your role what is the most challenging thing that you do followed by the most rewarding thing that you do so my role, we've talked a lot about the tourism piece, but the other side of the other hat that I wear is community development. Mm -hmm. And so my job has a variety of responsibilities, but for me, it's balancing the biggest challenge is balancing the needs of a visitor over or with the needs of the greater community. Mm. Um, sometimes that creates tough decisions that have to be made about where things can be or when things can be or, mm. um, you know, balancing the needs of my community that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And while I'm not from here, I've, I've adopted this place as home. Um, you can tell, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I have to, sometimes I have to figure out which hat is bigger and yeah. and that can be really challenging mm. because I I find great value in investing in our community and um, sometimes that means that you know having having something that's important for the community be at a different time because you know it's a peak of tourism something or mm -hmm. it's you know we really want to have this small town festival but they want to have it at the same time as you know the AT festival we're doing mm -hmm. or you know that sort of thing so finding a balance between serving our greater community and and serving um, those, those visitors, it's, it can be really tricky. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes I have to just go with your gut. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm really lucky to have cool people that I work with and, you know, great people who are willing to bounce ideas and that sort of thing, but it can be tough. Yeah. Um, my greatest reward in this job yeah. is when we've had a successful event and you can see it on people's faces. Yeah. So, you know, when I get to help the chamber of commerce put on their Christmas parade every year, yeah. um, last year we had the biggest attendance we think we've ever had at the oh, Christmas that's parade. Good. Thousands and thousands of our community came out and we lucked out with great weather and it was just, it was a magical day, even with the horse-drawn carriage that pooped in the middle of the road. Um, <laughs> And my dear, oh, my, something. my dear sweet better half was out there with a shovel with me and a Aww. trash bag. He don't work for the town, but he's, Aww. he's a good sport. Yes. Uh, he's a team player. Yes. Um, you know, but even with that, we, it was really cool to see how affected the little kids were and, you know, generations of families that were sitting on the sidewalk watching these things go by or being participants in mm -hmm. the parade. Um, 
having that palpable joy that we're able to bring to people's journey here. Yeah. Um, that's the best for me for sure. Yeah. The lights in people's eyes and the smiles on their faces. That's a gift. It really is. And I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great answer. Well, as we're wrapping up here, how best can the laughers follow front Royal? (laughs) the things you have to do here and get connected so they can come check it out. So we are like everyone else on the planet. We are on social media. (laughs) Um, We have Facebook and Instagram and um, we played around with that clock app for a little while, but we're, we're not that great at it. So what we want to do is we want you to come and experience it yourself and then you can make your own clock app videos and, <laughs> and you can tag us in it because we still have an account that you can tag us the um, clock app yeah, uh, otherwise known as tiktok, TikTok. Okay. yes um all us, right us government so i somewhat have it together <laughs> us government people have to be careful because we're not always allowed to use the tiktok so, i got you yes um okay. but we've got an account that you can tag us if you come check us out um, we, so we're on social media. Of course, we've got our website, discoverfrontroyal.com. And our visitor center here on Main Street is open seven days a week. Mm. So What are the hours? Nine to five. Nine to five. So you can give us a, a call. Week. You can yeah. snail mail. You can email us. Um, we, we're here. We're here to answer questions. We're here to help. We want people to come and have a great time. Yes, I agree with that. It's always fun to call you or have an exchange with you on email. You're a delightful <laughs> soul, lady. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I know I can be a little tough to nail down, so I appreciate your patience. But, um, you know, I, I'm really lucky to have staff who have a variety of interests because remember I mentioned earlier that I'm right. a bit of an indoor cat. Mm-hmm. They're not. So they go and do things like they can tell you how, how far it is up some sort of summit to get to. Su- uh, they know those things. I don't know. But that's why you hire people who are smarter than you so that's what i did but they're great and they they can tell you all the things i can tell you where to eat i'm a big fan of that <laughs> ld's pancake house spe- spaghetti special on thursdays it's one you want to you want to check out but that hiking stuff go. i don't know about yeah so. me neither but you can always check out our website you can always check on social media or give us a buzz there you go and thank you so much lizzie this has been super fun chatting it up with you today on all things front royal super fun right here in the shenandoah valley i loved our time together i've actually learned so much that i didn't know about your area which makes me more excited to come back again so thanks again for coming on the show and sharing all that with us thank you for coming to see us you know we don't get this kind of opportunity that often so i was really excited that you reached out and you're welcome back any old time oh i love that I love that, laughers. And thank you, laughers, for tuning in to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast. Like this video, share, and subscribe if you want to see me get my act together. (laughs) Uh, And we will have a lot of fun along the way. Also, don't forget to snag your discount at Prepopsterous. That's prepopsterous.com, P-R-E-P-O-P-S-T-E-R-O-U-S. And you can munch on it then when you join me on next week's episode. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, laughers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us, and we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by the funny Womax and friends. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday. So check back for another uplifting episode. Come to a FWAF show or let us bring one to you. To find out more, head to the funny Be sure to share this podcast with a friend. And until next time, cheers.